The superion interspinous spacer is an implant designed to fit between the spinous processes of the lumbar spine. It is indicated for the treatment of neurogenic intermittent claudication due to moderate lumbar spinal stenosis. In this video, we'll demonstrate the surgical technique for implantation at the L3-4 and L4-5 levels. First, the anterior posterior fluoroscopic view is used to identify the correct level to be treated. The lateral view can be used for additional confirmation. Here, a spinal needle is inserted first to map a trajectory at the appropriate surgical level. After confirmation of the target level, a midline incision is created with a scalpel and dissection is performed to the supraspinous ligament. A scalpel is then carefully advanced in both AP and lateral views to split the ligament. Next, the dilator assembly is introduced at midline. Here, the dilator assembly is visualized in the midline position between spinous processes. The assembly is then advanced with the assistance of a mallet until the distal tip approaches the dorsal aspect of the facet shadow or spinal laminar line. On the lateral view, the spinal laminar line connects the superior spinal laminar junction to the inferior spinal laminar junction. Each junction represents the intersection of the lamina with a spinous process. After midline position is again verified in the AP view, the dilator assembly handle is removed, leaving only the dilator. The cannula assembly is then inserted over the dilator and advanced until the distal tip reaches the dorsal aspect of the facet shadow and is seated between adjacent spinous processes. Both the dilator and the cannula assembly handle are removed, leaving only the outer cannula, also known as the working channel. This can be visualized in the lateral view as well. The ideal position of the working channel is about 10 millimeters dorsal to the spinal laminar junction. Next, the interspinous space is prepared by inserting the reamer through the cannula. Care must be taken to avoid advancing the reamer past the facet shadow or spinal laminar junction. The inner spinous gauge is then inserted through the cannula to determine the proper implant size. The distal tips of the gauge should contact the spinous process dorsal to the spinal laminar junction of the superior lamina. The appropriately sized implant is then loaded onto the inserter and the driver is inserted through the proximal entry point. The implant is then deployed with clockwise rotation of the driver. When the implant is deployed about 30%, AP fluoroscopy should be used to confirm bilateral containment of the superior and inferior spinous processes. A caudal and cephalad tilt of the fluoroscope may be necessary to visualize this. After confirmation, the driver is rotated clockwise to completely deploy the implant. A rocking, sagittal motion can be helpful with deployment. Care must be taken to maintain a strict sagittal motion with the rocking to minimize lateral deviation. In the AP view, the cam lobes of the implant should be seen containing the adjacent spinous processes. The implant should then be driven ventrally with a mallet so that the superior cam lobes rest against the superior segment's lamina. After final positioning, the lever is rotated upwards to deploy the implant, and the inserter and cannula are then withdrawn. We'll now repeat the steps for the L4-5 level. Again, the dilator assembly is introduced at midline and visualized between spinous processes. The assembly is advanced until the distal tip approaches the dorsal aspect of the facet shadow, or spinal laminar line. The cannula assembly is then inserted over the dilator and is seated between adjacent spinous processes. Both the dilator and the cannula assembly handle are removed, leaving only the working channel. The inner spinous space is then prepared by inserting the reamer through the cannula. The inner spinous gauge is then inserted through the cannula to determine the appropriate implant size. The appropriately sized implant is then loaded and deployed. AP fluoroscopy is again used to confirm bilateral containment of the spinous processes by the cam lobes of the implant. The implant is then driven ventrally so that the superior cam lobes rest against the superior segment's lamina. Final images indicate successful deployment of the inner spinous spacer at the L3-4 and L4-5 levels.